Hey folks, Wally Diem here, and today we're going to take a look at a puzzle that involves statues of an elderly couple. Now, once the player's characters mess around with these statues, they're going to reveal a few clues that's going to give them an item. Now, depending on what time of year it is, may be how you theme this puzzle, because if you are in the Christmas or holiday time, then you could use this as a Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus puzzle. But of course, if you are out of season, then you can just have this be an elderly couple that has a little bit of lore to your homebrew world or maybe a mystery to the players. Before we get into the puzzle, just a reminder that if you are enjoying the content on this channel, please consider supporting it by hitting the subscribe button, leaving a comment, and picking up a copy of my book, Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters, available now on DriveThruRPG. Now let's get started with our video. So in this puzzle, our adventuring party is exploring a mansion. They come across this room that looks like a very nice den or a living room, and we've got a few things of notice. We have a bear skin, or in this case, an owl skin rug. In the back, we have a fireplace, we have a piano, a clock, and we have two mysterious statues. This statue here is of an elderly gentleman with a coat and a big belt, a hat that kind of flops over to the side, and a bushy beard and he is looking out this window at a distance. Our second statue, which is a little bit misrepresented by this token, but this is the only one that I could find, is actually sitting down and looking down as if she was reading a book. Now, if our characters are to explore the rest of this room, they're not going to find anything else that is going to be significant for the solving of the puzzle. But now, if, let's say, our archer comes over here and tries to move or just touches this statue here, then they are going to be pulled into this statue, and they're going to have their conscience about them, and it's going to be as if they were looking through the eyes of the statue. So for as long as our archer has her hand on the statue, it's going to be as if she's looking through this man's eyes out the window at a distance. But the only difference is everything is going to be blurry. She's not going to be able to read or make out anything. And it does appear that there is some strange markings on this window. Now the statue is in place, so she's not going to be able to move her head or anything like that. And when she's done looking through the eyes of the statue, all she has to do is consciously make an effort to take her hand off the statue and she will return to normal. Now the same thing is going to be for our other statue. Again, this is not a statue that is standing, rather she is sitting down. She seems to be an elderly woman that is reading a book and her neck is in a position where she's looking down at this book. So let's say our bard comes over here and does the same thing. If he were to touch this woman on her shoulder, his conscience would be pulled into the statue and he would be able to see the book that she is reading. Unfortunately, though it is going to be blurry and he's not going to be able to make out any of the words. Now of course just like our archer when the bard is done looking through the eyes of the statue all he has to do is make a conscious effort to remove his hand and everything's going to return to normal. So it's at this time our players are probably going to figure out that they need to further explore the mansion or the house or wherever that you have this that there's not enough information in here to solve the puzzle. So let's say the characters go upstairs and they find the bedroom of the elderly couple. So our adventuring party is now upstairs and they find the elderly couple's bedroom. Now there's going to be a couple of things in here that are going to help them solve the puzzle that's downstairs. The first is going to be a painting that's going to give a clue. Now if you're using a visual aid, I would definitely recommend a painting very similar to this. But if you're using Theater of the Mind, then you're going to want to describe this painting in a non-suspicious manner. I would recommend something as follows. You see a painting that is hanging above the bed. It is of an elderly man with glasses that has a red hat that is folded to the side. He's a little bit of a heavier set man with a buckle around his waist, a coat, and a thick beard. He is standing next to his wife that is wearing glasses, has a gray has grayish hair and is wearing an apron. They look to be very happy. Something along that effect. But of course we all realize that the most important part of that description is that both of these, the man and the woman in this painting are wearing glasses. And if the characters or the players ask if the statues downstairs were wearing glasses, the answer is definitely no. 
So with that in mind, on each of these end tables is a pair of glasses. On the right, our archer is going to be able to come over here and grab a pair of square thick glasses. And our fighter can come over here to the other end table and grab a pair of round glasses. Now with the men's square glasses and the women's round glasses in hand, they have everything they need to solve the puzzle downstairs. So let's go back downstairs and put the finishing pieces in place. Now that our characters have the square and the round glasses, they can come back down here to the family room or the den. And let's say our archer has these square glasses. She's going to be able to put them on the statue of the elderly man, and they are going to be a perfect fit. After she does that, as she touches her hand to the shoulder of the statue, then her conscience is once again going to be inside the statue. And now she is looking at out the eyes of the statue at this windowsill. But previously it was blurry because our statue here is actually nearsighted, meaning he cannot see far away, but the glasses are going to help him focus and see far away. And with these in place, our archer is going to be able to read half of a musical chorus. And these are going to be notes that can be played on a piano. Now let's say our fighter comes over here. Again, this is a statue of an elderly woman that is sitting down reading a book and she is actually farsighted meaning she can't see close up so our fighter can take the glasses and put them on the statue and then touch his hand to the statue where his conscience is going to be pulled into the statue and now this time when they're looking down at the book they're going to see the other half of the chorus or the musical notes that are going to need to be played on the piano. Now it's up for our players to put the final pieces in place. They have half of a verse that can be played on piano from looking through the eyes of the elderly man statue. They have half of a verse from looking through the eyes of the elderly woman that is sitting reading a book statue. And now if our bard were to take all of that information and come over here to the piano and to play both of those choruses put together, then this piano, once the chorus is done being played, is going to reveal a secret compartment and they're going to be able to obtain an item that was inside that they were looking for or an item that they'll need for a future adventure or future encounter. Now, as the bard is playing the piano, perhaps as a dungeon master, you might want to include a DC 15 performance check to be able to play the melody perfectly, but that's totally up to you and it's an optional way to include a skill check in your puzzle. Now that the characters have this item, they should be able to continue on exploring this mansion. So this may be one of the easiest puzzles that I've ever created. Once the characters are able to touch the statue, whether they're trying to move it out of the way or just trying to do an investigation check, they're going to be able to see through the statue's eyes. They're going to see blurry words or blurry images, and they're probably going to realize that they're going to need to put glasses on these statues. Now with that in mind, I'm very interested on how you would use this puzzle. Are you going to make this Mr. and Mrs. Claus and have this for a holiday adventure? Or do you have a different idea for an elderly couple? Maybe some lore in your game, maybe a mystery, or perhaps you're going to run this as a sequel to one of the earliest puzzles on my channel, The Arguing Couple. I think the two puzzles would work nicely together. Now, if you'd like to see me run this puzzle, I've actually got a five-part mini-series, The Obelisk of Ambervain. This was a one-shot adventure that I ran for a few of my YouTube friends, and this was one of the four puzzles that was involved in that one-shot. If you'd like to take a look at that, you can find that in the link that I'll put in the description below. So that's all I have for you today. What did you think of the puzzle? Is this something that you could use in your game? And if so, what would you do differently? In particular, are you going to use Mr. and Mrs. Claus? Or do you have someone else in mind for these statues? I'm looking forward to the comments. Let's get a great discussion going. Thank you very much for watching, and on to the next.